Hello, and welcome back to the Nomadic Striker YouTube channel. I am Nomadic Striker, I am reporting for international duty with San Marino. and welcome back to the Nomadic Striker YouTube channel. We've had a bit of time away from YouTube lately, but that's mainly because I got back into kind of the flow of Football Manager blogging over at footballmanageraddict.com. But I was keen to give the content creation on YouTube another go, if I could find a different kind of challenge. And I think I found one that is going to be fairly interesting. Now, this same idea came about when I was reading an article on the BBC in the run-up to England's current round of World Cup qualifiers, their first opponent was lowly San Marino, who I actually thought did quite well to only lose 5-0 against England. So that tells you a lot about San Marino as a footballing nation. Now, the BBC article was entitled, How do you improve the world's worst national team? San Marino has a population of around 30,000 people, so effectively you could fit the entire population of San Marino into Wembley three times. That tells you a lot about the problems they have to start with. Furthermore, the country only has 1,800 registered football players, which is around 6% of its entire population, compared to around 25% of people in England who are registered football players. So that's things like six aside, uh, futsal, all that kind of stuff, alongside professional players, of course. As a result, San Marino were ranked 210 out of all 210 FIFA nations in real life. On the game, they're ranked 209. So the question is, how do you go about improving that? Well, the BBC article didn't really answer that question. It kind of suggested that better infrastructure and planning was required, but it got me thinking whether you could do that and whether you could improve San Marino using Football Manager. Now, obviously, it requires a bit of tinkering with the game's database. So I went into the game editor and I proved a few things. Firstly, I boosted their youth ranking, youth rating from 29 to 200, which is the maximum available. I also changed the game importance of San Marino from completely useless at the bottom up to the very important, which is the highest available. I also changed years to gain nationality from 25 to 1. That means that any players who are playing for a San Marinese side can become available for the national team in any one year. A couple of other things I changed were the FA's financial power, which was set at zero. And I put that at 20. So that means San Marino as a country should be stronger. And I changed the economic factor from 12 to 18. I'm not 100% sure how that's going to affect things or what it's going to do. But I just figured that it would help. Um, we'll see how those kind of factors play into it. I think the main way that San Marino can improve is by having infrastructure in place that will help them develop better players to have better young players coming through. They're going to help the standard of football in San Marino to grow. And as a result, ideally, help the national team become better. So I also went into the San Marino's clubs and boosted their youth facilities, their youth coaching, their youth reputation, and their youth importance. I didn't give them perfect stats. I gave them like between 12, 15, 18. So there's about 12 teams in San Marino, which includes the likes of La Fiorita 1967, Tre Fiori, Tre Penne, Folgora Falciano, and Penarossa. Obviously, you can't play in the San Marino League on Football Manager. There's already a San Marino Academy in the game. So the other thing I did was to create a new San Marino Academy that will compete in this Italian Serie C. I've given that team perfect youth stats. 
I also gave them one fantastic young San Marinese player to get started with. And I selected the option for the game to create new players for playable teams. That has turned out very nicely to start with because the San Marino Academy, who I'll show you in a minute, have created a load of new gen players who are ready to step up. They're, some of them are very young, but they are able to kind of come in and play for the San Marino national team. So we have gone ahead and got started as San Marino manager. We are Andy Selva, who is San Marino's all-time record scorer with eight goals in 74 caps, I believe. We've got a big a big task facing us. Um, but the aim of the save basically is to see if we can develop San Marino as a nation. And in, in doing so, we're going to have to kill players who are good enough to do that. We've actually got players who are stronger than I was expecting, who have been kind of regened by the game. So that's kind of helped us to start with. I think we've got a solid basis of a team to start working with. And to start with, we have a couple of potentially winnable games against uh, Gibraltar and Liechtenstein in the Nations League Division D. Long-term goal of the save is to win a match like San Marino have never won a World Cup qualifier or a European Championships qualifier. So the immediate aim is to build San Marino to a point where they've got better players, they can start to compete, they can win a game, and from there we will see how we get on. The only way that they can become better is to create better players. So we've kind of got a head start on that, but this is what we're working with. This is the squad that we've announced for the first game against Gibraltar, which is today. So let's run you through the squad. In goal, we have Benedettini, one of the two Benedettinis, Aya Benedettini, who is a real player who plays for Cesena. We also have Eduardo Colombo, who is also a real player who plays for Fermana. I accidentally included four goalkeepers, so let's ignore Guerra, but the number one goalkeeper has come through the San Marino Academia, which I will show you in a second. In defence, we have Simone Nani, Andrea Berti. Mirko Palazzi is a real player who plays for Marinianesi. He is 33 years old. He can play as centre-back and left-back, but I think we're going to play him a right-back. We also have Dennis Matza, who's a left-back, and he's actually not bad. Not the best tackler in the world, but Zenotti is another option, a centre-back. He's probably going to be our starting centre-back. And then... We have two holding midfielders who are decent, who've gone through the Academia. So the first is Marioni, and then also Alberto Casali, who is the brand new captain of San Marino. The other Benedettini is Andrea Benedettini, who's come through the Academia. Uh, he's a left winger, but he's actually got stats or attributes, rather, that I think could help him play in midfield. We don't have a natural midfielder, a central midfielder. So we've got quite a lot of attacking talent to work with. We've got Giacomo Calani, who's a right winger. Radi is also a right winger. He's come through the Academia. Tomasini is a real player from Penarossa. He's a right winger, left winger slash striker. We've got Radi is a right winger. Franchiosi is a winger also. Paolo Selva is going to be our starting left winger. He's only 16. Nicola Nani is a real player who's on loan from Crotone at uh, Seri Seaside Cesena. So Voli has come through the Academia, and he's actually a pretty decent prospect. 16 finishing, half-decent technique, not a lot of pace, but good natural fitness. So he's going to be an option off the bench, as is Manuel Forcellini. But the main player we need to focus on is this man. This is Davide San Marino, who is a player I created in the editor, just because I felt like if San Marino are going to improve, they need a figurehead. They need someone to focus on who can get people excited about football in San Marino. So I've created this guy. I've given him 200 potential, so he could become a great player. But his ability at the start is obviously not that high. I've given him some player traits like overhead kicks, getting the crowd going, hitting free kicks with power. It's like he's going to be an exciting player. He's 15 to start with. So he's not got the physicals that you'd expect of a seasoned international, but I think he could be the player to build San Marino around. 
He is contracted to the San Marino Academy, the Nomadic Strikers San Marino Academy, to give it its full name. But I put them in Serie CC, where they are competing with the likes of Bari, Foggia, Catania, Palermo. They're actually in Palermo's league. So that's a decent quality. So this is going to give those young players coming through a real opportunity to grow and it's going to help them develop. Those are the players we're working with. We are on game day, so we're going to get ahead and go into the game. Now, I've come up with a few different approaches. The main one is going to be probably this one, to be honest. This is kind of park the bus approach where we just, if we're up against really big teams who we have no chance against, then I haven't actually tinkered with these kind of um, instructions yet, but we will do when we come to use it. So that's a defensive approach. This is another defensive approach, slightly less cautious, but kind of taking a 4-4-2 approach and we're going to, it's going to be a direct kind of counter-attacking approach. And then this is the one I want to use today. So I think we're actually going to risk it and go positive. We're up against Gibraltar. They're not a great team. I want us to get the ball into San Reno and Nani. Nani's going to play in like a deep lying role so he can drop into this hole here. This is what we're going to start with against Gibraltar. So let's get into the game. There are actually some some concerns here around the approach. I don't know if that really matters at international football level, but obviously you don't really have the time to work on the tactics with them. Um, we may need to have a look at some of these, though, like further down the line. So Zanotti feels we're too defensive, which is interesting, but there's been 11 changes from the last San Reno game, apparently, which is interesting. Um, so let's go ahead and take on Gibraltar. So just to remind you, Vanucci is in goal, Palazzi is playing at right back, Nani and Zanotti are at centre back, Matza is playing at left back. We've got two holding midfielders of Casali and Mariani. Urkelani is playing on the right wing, Salva's at left wing, and then we've got the the strike duo of Nicola Nani and Davide San Marino. So let's get into the dressing room. They're saying we're favourites, so let's tell them to do it for the fans. That has not worked. No. <laughs> Let's tell him it's a special day. He's fine. And here we go. We've actually created a new stadium, which it looks like we're using. I created the San Marino Coliseum in the hope that it's not supposed to be finished built building until 2023, so they shouldn't be in it yet, but it looks like they have. But oh what a goal that is. Giacomo Ercolani with an absolute thunderbolt in our first game. The Nani dropping deep, which is nice. Oh, look at that. What a goal. Giacomo Ercolani joins a host of players on one goal for San Marino on his debut. After four minutes of his debut, he's entered San Marino folklore, which isn't particularly long, but... It's like Gibraltar counter-attacking straight from the kickoff, and they've scored. Oh, it's offside. Lee Cassiano just straight offside there. We may need to do some opposition instructions. Oh, well, we've had a goal. It's allowed. This is an amazing start. One goal, two disallowed after, what, 10 minutes, 11 minutes was that? So Ekelani's having a bit of a blinder. Uh, they've got an attacking free kick. Isn't down. Oh, he's got in. That's a goal. Oh, we've been paid back just before the break. That's annoying. We don't need to see that. Can we respond? Here's Samarine. No, they've got the ball back. Now we're going to play the midfield. Mariani on the ball. And there's Samarino, and it's a goal. Davide Samarino on his debut. In the final minute of the first half gets on the scoreboard the 15 year old Davide San Marino. That's got to be some kind of record, hasn't it? For the youngest goal scorer in international football. 15 years old and he's on the mark for San Marino. Let's tell them we can do better. 
they do not care they do not care they don't care um let's tell them we're happy no demotivated what i don't really get that let's encourage them see if that helps no nope. doesn't seem to have so we've got some pretty tight layers we've won that ball back and given it away that's a good interception by Metza and Selva's off. And there's Samarino's in, and he's scored twice. Davide Samarino has become an instant hero on his Samarino debut. Selva plays the ball into, I think that was Mariani maybe, and Samarino absolutely toe punts it past the goalkeeper, and he's having a dream debut despite being absolutely knackered but and oh i think nanny's in the bar but it's offside they're on the attack now they've got two players called colado who oh let's hit the post and go wide oh, it looks like they're kind of let's get this guy off so, Frankie Ozzy can come on and Ferrari can come on the right. And let's give this guy a rest for Zaboli. They made a triple sub there. And let's just drop it down to balanced. San Marino. Oh, look at this. Three on one. Zaboli's in and he scored. It's too easy. And we can now with certainty say this is San Marino's, pretty sure this is San Marino's first ever win. Obviously, Gibraltar are not very good, clearly, because we battered them. Although it's been even on shots and fairly even on XG, but we have beaten Gibraltar 4 1. It's San Marino's first win in the first game at the San Marino Coliseum. And they love it. They're finally responding. Yeah, good time to score. And we're off the league. So the under-21s took a battering off Norway, 5-0. Oh, look at this man, what a hero, what a hero. One cap, two goals at the age of 15. It is unbelievable. We'll go and do a press conference. A great start. Top goal by Joker it was, it was a screamer. Thank you very much. So there we are. We're on the board. We have won San Marino's first ever match. As you can see, we've got another round against Liechtenstein up next, and then we play them both within a few days in November. Depending how things go against Liechtenstein, we may come back for that Gibraltar game. But I thought one thing to look at that might be interesting. San Marino's all-time record. So Andy Silva is the all-time scorer, all-time top scorer with eight goals. So Davide San Marino already equaled the most overall goals by a player in a season of two, which Silva set in 2001. Oldest player is 39. The youngest goal scorer is, of course, Davide San Marino, which I'm fairly sure is some kind of international record. We shall see. Their all-time highest ranking, which we're aiming for, is 118, set in 2019, which actually surprises me. They've gone down from one year ago. They've dropped 102 places in a year. So that's what we're aiming for. We want to get to that level and then ideally go beyond it. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're interested in this challenge. Um, I'm not really sure where it's going to take us, uh, but I'm, I'm fairly confident we can improve this. Like I'm fairly confident we've already improved them. But... Can we get a result in qualifying? Can we beat Liechtenstein? I think if we finish top of this group, we move into the next level of the Nations League. So there's quite a lot to play for. Like I'm not expecting us to go and win the World Cup in 10 years or anything, but there's a lot to play for. There's only one direction we can go in, and that's up. We're not going to go further down. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Drop a like subscribe all that kind of good stuff and stay tuned for more in the next episode